how do drugs actually come into the United States and how do they work? It's okay. I got you. I'll explain right now. <laughs> Typically, guys, most of the drugs that come into that, that are in the United States are imported into the United States through Mexico. Okay? Cocaine, heroin, etc., methamphetamine, you know, especially, you know, not this bullshit shake and bake that they have here that the Nazis make. I'm talking about that real crystal methamphetamine. They call it ice. Okay? It looks like glass. All right? Typically, it's imported from Mexico into the United States. Sometimes it's brought into the United States by boat from uh, from Colombia, etc. as well. Okay? So you got maritime smuggling and you got land border smuggling. Most of the drugs that come in the United States, because remember, guys, cocaine cannot be made in the United States. Okay? It's made from coca leaves, which is international. So it's brought into the United States through South Texas, through Southern California, through whatever. And then once it's smuggled into the United States, typically it needs to be brought to a stash house immediately. Once it's brought into the stash house, those drugs need to get off the border ASAP. Why? Well, the reason why, guys, is because the drugs need to get moved to the next leg in the chain, okay? So they can be distributed in the United States. So I'll give an example of how it would work out where I was in Laredo, okay? So drugs come into the United States. They're, import they're smuggled in, whether through a vehicle when they go through the bridge or smuggled in across the river with a coyote, whatever it is. It's brought in. Once it's brought into the United States, it's immediately moved into a stash house. Once it's at that stash house, they're trying, the, the next goal is to get it past the Border Patrol, okay? And um, just so you guys know, Border Patrol has authority, right? Because the United States, guys, the functional border equivalent, right, is 29 miles from the United States border. All of that's considered the functional equivalent of the border, essentially, right? So the, the smugglers know I need to get it off the southwest border. I got Border Patrol here. I got Homeland Security Investigations. I got FBI, DEA. Everyone and their mom investigates drug trafficking, guys. The, the sheriff's offices, etc. in the south. So they got to get it past this, the, 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 the Border Patrol. Once they get it past Border Patrol and, and law enforcement on the southern border, they're pretty much good. They need to get it to a major city. Now, for us, when I was in Laredo, I knew the next major city was San Antonio, two, miles, uh, two, two hours north on Interstate 35. Once it gets to San Antonio aka a major city you have many different highways that come through okay you got interstate 35 which takes you north and then you got interstate 10 which cuts through san antonio which takes you east to west in the united states guys remember even numbers are east to west odd numbers are north to south again even numbers are east to west odd numbers are north to south for example interstate 95 which goes right through miami into new york city odd number right but if you look at interstate 10 from jacksonville all the way to los angeles that's even number it goes east to west all right so once it gets to San Antonio, they pretty much made it because San Antonio has many different highways that goes through it, okay? So you can either go east to, uh, east to Atlanta, or sorry, east to Houston, and then take it to Atlanta, which is another big drug hub, or you can go west, take it to Phoenix, take it to Los Angeles, etc. But most of the time, most of the drugs that came into Laredo went east. They went towards Atlanta, which then would go into the Carolinas, then go into New York, okay? Or it would go north, into the Midwest, Chicago, Minneapolis, etc. Okay, Dallas, Hugh, uh, Dallas, Austin, because all those cities are also on Interstate 35. So the goal, once you get the drugs into the United States, is get it to a major city. From that major city, you're able to split up. Typically, it's a big load. When the drugs come into the United States from the southwest border, guys, it's 20, 50, 60, 70, sometimes 100 kilos. And everybody owns a part of that package. Sometimes it's one traf drug trafficker, maybe it's two drug traffickers, maybe it's three drug traffickers that own parts of those drugs okay and then once it gets to the major city it's distributed to the people that need it and then from there you got your wholesaler in the major city who distributes it on lower levels to everyone else okay now once that that wholesale guy distributes it to other people that's when you start getting it to your street dealers etc and then that's when they start cutting it down or whatever if that wholesale supplier himself doesn't cut it down himself which he may do as well but you know, the negative is when you cut down the drugs, the quality of the drugs, you're not going to have as good of a product, right? So it's a very delicate balance where you're trying to maximize profit while simultaneously also having the best product, right? So let's bring it back to this case. Now that we have a general overview of how drug trafficking works in the United States, right? These guys were bringing their drugs in from the West Coast, okay? They were going all the way, which I guarantee you was probably Southern California, because like I said before, typically... Uh, the closer to the Mexican border the drugs are, the higher quality they are. So if you get drugs in Phoenix versus getting drugs in Chicago, nine out of 10 times, that cocaine in Phoenix is going to be more pure because it's going to be closer to the Mexican border, aka closer to the source, all right? Um, so the fact that they were getting their drugs 
from the West Coast tells me they were probably getting it from San Diego, Los Angeles, so etc. They were probably getting it from some some drug trafficking organization out west. And they would go get it and then drive it all the way back. And they were mailing it as well, which is why the US US Postal Inspection Service was involved. And I guarantee fucking to you, the reason why you you USPIS was so involved was because they probably had a seizure through the mail, did a controlled delivery, delivered it to some idiot and someone flipped and snitched. Guaranteed. Okay? Damn, I'm giving y'all a lot of sauce right now. Ain't nobody breaking this down for y'all. Like the goddamn video right now.